there. Thanks a lot for dropping by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy, today it's the young rascals before they became just the rascals. And they had a number one hit under their belt with Good Lovin' from earlier this same year. 1966 on Long Island, New York, and a great four-color window card, typical 14 by 22 inch cardboard composition. So the Young Rascals on this poster, not the only ones though to have a number one hit. There's actually two other acts on here who also hit that pinnacle as well. And I'll get to that of course in a minute. But taking this one from the top, it does say up there, Metropolitan College Organization Presents. And then you've got the Young Rascals in that jumbled lettering. And above their name is that, you know, fun common publicity photo but I'm not going to come in too close on that yet because I'm going to show you a second poster here and it's got that picture much better. So the, rascal, the Young Rascals, I have to watch myself here, um, <laughs> started the year with a minor hit and that was I Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore. Um, only hit number 52 nationally but I imagine it did a lot better in the New York area. Certainly did better in Los Angeles where I grew up as a kid and it was a hit on the radio there, but nationally just 52. And then Good Lovin' came out at the start of spring and went all the way to number one. And remember, that was not a Rascals original, that was a cover version. Then, following Good Lovin', they had a couple of singles that didn't fare nearly as well, did sort of respectively, but those would be You Better Run and Come On Up. Fun songs, but not hit singles. Okay, after the Rascals, you've got the Vagrants there. That's right, with their picture, and they were the local band from Long Island. They charted nothing, either album or single-wise, but they did feature guitarist Leslie West. And of course, he went on to be a founder of Mountain, the power rock trio, formed with Cream's producer Felix Pavalardi. Next on the bill, you've got Ruby and the Romantics from Akron, Ohio, so they were a long way from home. Uh, their charting days were behind them by this point, but Our Day Will Come was number one both pop and R&B in 1963. Then the Crystals are the final act with, of course, there's nobody else left to have the third number one re record on this poster. Um, before the concert, that is. The Rascals had a couple more later. And that would be with He's a Rebel in 1962. However, if you know your Phil Spector producing history, you're not surprised at all to know that He's a Rebel was sung by Darlene Love, and she certainly wasn't with them. I don't know if she ever performed live with them. But Dolores Brooks probably wasn't with them either by this point, and she sang lead on Then He Kissed Me and Do Run Run. So, you know, it was sort of a producer's group with some talented gals for sure, but, you know, hey, you know, AM radio fans in the mid-1960s, they surely didn't know the difference, you know, the faces on stage. All they wanted to do was hear the hit records they heard. But I imagine all that personnel confusion and lack of authenticity for the Crystals by now resulted in their bottom billing. Now it's interesting how Murray, poster printing company, decided not to put any song titles on this because how fun would that have been to have those three number one hits, you know, Good Lovin', He's a Rebel, Our Day Will Come. That would have been really fun to have those on the poster, but, you know, alas, um, that's just usually not what Murray did. And really, you know, I think it would have goosed ticket sales, I would certainly think. Okay, so then you got the details down there. Um, it says, as you can see, Friday, October 7th at 8 p.m. with no year given. Interestingly, the next poster does give the year. Long Island Arena, Veterans Highway, Comac, Long Island. Tickets, two and a half bucks, three twenty-five, and four dollars. And then lots of ticket buying information I won't read to you. And down in the lower left margin, it does say the Murray Poster Printing Company of New York City. So this was the good loving Young Rascals. Let's go ahead and jump ahead a year to the Groovin' Young Rascals. And the summer of 1967, with that number one hit Groovin' having just left the charts. Take a look at this concert poster. Wow. The Young Rascals in concert in Pittsfield, Western Massachusetts. So, first thing you notice is this window card or poster doesn't have the color that the other one had, but it has the great, great picture right in the middle there and a nice, large size. Take a look at that. 
uncropped, bigger, and much more clear. So that's the big bonus for this concert poster. Now this was the group's, I'll, I'll say, the publicity photo for their first couple of years. Kind of funny how the chairs they're kneeling on, I'll say just the rascals already. Well, that was the group's original name. Then when they signed to Atlantic Records and a conflict was discovered, they had to add, or chose to add, Young to their name to avoid confusion. But once the hits piled up, they went ahead and dropped it again. So if you're a fan, you know, in that photo left to right, Gene Cornish on guitar, Eddie Brigatti on vocals and tambourine, Dino Donnelly, the drummer, and Felix Cavalieri on keyboard and vocals. And it's funny, the picture even has that old-fashioned photography studio logo in the lower left corner, like, you know, <laughs> old-fashioned movie star pictures used to have. So, this is really a nice, solid, black and white, you know, window card concert poster measuring the same as the other one. And uh, coming from the top there, it's all pretty simple, straightforward information, like boxing-style concert posters usually are. Park Square Productions presents The Young Rascals and The Continentals in concert at the Pittsfield Boys Club. That was a city about an hour and a half, let's call it an hour southeast of Albany, New York. Sunday, July 30th, 1967, so it does give the year on here. And, uh, you know, I've always estimated about 1 in 20 original vintage concert posters did have the year on there. And then 8 p.m. Tickets, three and a half dollars reserved and two and a half dollars for the bleacher. And then three ticket outlets are given. Well, the Young Rascals, soon to be just the Rascals again, but I like early stuff, so it's nice to have a couple of Young posters to show you today. You know, from this point onwards, though, their next five singles would all be top 20 hits, including the number one, People Got to Be Free. And it all greased the rails for the Rascals to make it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Great showing you this fun stuff today. Thanks a lot for dropping by, and uh, see you again for something soon. Okay, bye-bye now.